Sean, how y'all doing? Philly Dallas. It's a blessing to be back, as always, man. Want to thank the worship team for bringing us into the presence, man. Not only just worship, but also worshiping in our giving, y'all. We don't take that light. We thank the Lord for that. We give him glory for that. And uh, like Paulie said, man, last week, prayer, man, I just want to thank Thank everybody that pressed through and came out, man, for the glory of the Most High, man. We give glory, give glory for that, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And um, even them that wanted to make it but couldn't, man. And we trying to put certain things together by the grace of God, you know what I'm saying? So everybody could get a, um, an experience of it. Me and my wife trying to, trying to see how to do it, man. You know, but um, it's going to all come together by the grace of God, man. So man, we just we just love these 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 beginnings, man. These new beginnings, I call it. Me and her be talking and just running it, yo. You know what I'm saying? So man, we we grateful and we thank the Most High for that, man. When we sitting amongst each other and and just um, looking at what the Lord is doing. So man, we gonna get into this word, man. We kind of who for the do? Let, let me let me get in it, man. We gotta. Got a little bit to cover, y'all. So we're going to go ahead on and get straight to it. I'm going to be coming out of um, Ephesians, and we could jump straight to it. I'm not going to even go to Timothy, y'all, by the grace of the Most High. And uh, we've been talking about prayer, y'all. Just talking about prayer and where to place it, but going deep on how prayer undergirds every single armor of God, every single spiritual weapon that God then gave us as believers, y'all. Prayer undergirds it. And we liken it and correlated it to Jesus being the, the, the chief cornerstone of everything that God is doing, everything that God is building. You know what I'm saying? In this New Testament time, and we know that the Old Testament pointed to him as well. And anything, when you understand a chief cornerstone, when you understand something that undergirds, when you understand a slab, you know what I'm saying? It always has to be laid first, y'all. Who? It not only undergird, but it has to go before. There's no way you could start building without first laying the foundation. And that's how prayer is in our life. It's like the cornerstone. It's, it undergirds every single thing that we do. And it goes before, it's laid first before every single thing we do. So we just want to continue that, man. And we've been going through this armor, y'all. And we talked about um, this armor, dealing with it. I'm going to go ahead on and read it. And then we're going to get into it by the grace of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 through 18, y'all. And uh, we're going to try to correlate this thing to faith. Ooh. We're dealing with a heavy one. This thing going to bless us, y'all. For the, the, the scripture says, start y'all. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Mm, we understand these days are evil, y'all. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having girded our waist with truth. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shot our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one. Because he shoot fiery darks. Anybody know that he shoot fiery darks? Anybody know that he shoot darks? Anybody know that? You know what I'm saying? But it's the shield of faith that quenched it, y'all. Verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Daddy, bless this word tonight. Be with us, Father. We invite you in. God, come down, God, and have your way. Walk with us, Father, Lord. And for the Lord, increase our faith. Fill us up with faith, God, that our prayers be powerful, most high. Well, Daddy, we're asking you to take, God, these little fish and loaves and feed the multitude. 
God, have your way, God, just like you dealt with me, just like, Father the Lord, in this study time, Father the Lord, you showed me some things, O King. O Father, I'm asking you to do the same, God. And Daddy, we promise to be ever so careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, we ask that you bind the enemy. God, we know, God, that prayer, God, is a tough subject to preach, O King. And Father, we know, God, that the enemy always want to steal the word, God. Especially when it's got something to do with prayer. So Father, bless this service, Most High. We thank you for it even now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, y'all. So we started, man, by just talking about prayer undergirding all these spiritual weapons, y'all. These armor, this armor of God that we have as believers, which is detrimental to our faith. It's detrimental. Oh, Breeze, we, we, we've been, we've been, God been sharing some things, huh? Woo, man, he's been speaking in my family, yo. We've been having sweet communion, man, concerning the Lord. Prayer undergirds, y'all. We talked about it. It kind of works as a sort of a foundation, y'all, as a slab being laid and undergirds. So we've been going through and we went through talking about how it undergirds truth in our life. We talked about how it undergirds, y'all, not only truth in our life, but how it undergirds righteousness in our life. And, and man, we went through, we went in on that. We also talked about, y'all, how it undergirds the gospel of peace, the gospel of peace. And that's where we stopped at. And we went in just breaking down what the gospel was. Because a lot of time, especially for us as a culture, as a people, y'all, because we've been doing church for a long, long time. And God had promised that we would be a religious people when you go and read Deuteronomy, that we would serve wood and we would serve stone, y'all. The dome of the rock. You know what I'm saying? Bowling and bending to statues. Being caught up in the religious things. Who? Not real religion. But doctrines from men, y'all. You know what I'm saying? So we went in and broke down what the gospel is. It's a part of the Bible that's more important than all of the Bible. You can read all of the Bible, and if you miss what the gospel is, you done missed it all, man. You done missed it all. And sad to say, a lot operate like that. We miss the gospel. We miss the most important thing. A little piece that he put, yo. And it was all about the good news, man. We broke it down in fashion. You know what I'm saying? We took our time, gave you every single thing that you would need to know about this gospel. So now we want to go in and we want to just pick up where we stopped, y'all. We want to pick up where we stopped. And we want to deal with this, this next thing that prayer undergirds. That prayer undergirds and the next thing that prayer undergirds and hopefully we can um, flow through it. I'm going to try to take my time, but man, I'm really trying to get through it, y'all. So for the Lord, help me, daddy, as we deal with this word. We're talking about prayer undergirding, y'all, the shield of faith. Who? this is a big topic right now. This is a big topic right here, and I'm trying to condense it and move quickly. But this is one of the most important topics, y'all, outside of the gospel, man. <laughs> this faith, this faith is the real deal, y'all. It's the most important, you know what I'm saying, spiritual weapon and armor of God that we have. And we're going to get into that. It's the most important one. Is even more important in prayer, Miss Terry. <laughs> and we're going to get into it and we're going to see how God wants us to cut it in our lives. You know what I'm saying? This faith is deep, y'all. It's deep. I have in my notes to get into it and, and we're going to flow. You know what I'm saying? Now, for the most of us, y'all, we know that the shield of faith is depicted from no other than the shield of the Roman soldier. The shield of the Roman soldier. Sound good, I sent you some pics. Let me get them pics up right quick. I sent you some pictures. The shield is no other, y'all. 
No other than the shield of the Roman soldiers. That's the first pick. That's the first pick. Sound boy, keep going. And I'm going to just flow with it. And we see them using this large shield, y'all, individually on the battlefield. That was the first, the first pick of it. They used this big, large shield, y'all, individual, individually. But we also see them using this large shield, um, shield as a collective upon the battlefield. Look at that. What did the other one sound boot before that? Look at that. Look at that. Ain't nothing able to penetrate that, yo. Ain't nothing able to penetrate that. They all in unity I have in my notes. In one accord, yo. Able to quench all the fiery darks of their enemies. You know what I'm saying? The soldiers couldn't do nothing with the Romans, yo. Individually with this big huge shield, yo. But also as a unit, as one accord. And as I was studying this, God was showing me, this is how I want my people to be. In unity of the faith. Oh, God. And not doctrine, not faith and doctrine, because we're going to get into it. We all got little different doctrines as long as we come in agreement on this higher doctrine, which is, which is Christ, y'all. But we all should be able to come together with simple faith. Understanding that who God is, who and that he a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We're going to get into that. You know what I'm saying? And God was showing me that they was in unity and in one accord, y'all. They quench not some, y'all, but all the darts, all the arrows, all the attacks from their enemies. Using these large shields, y'all, that the apostle Paul depicts as one of the weapons of the arm of God for us as Christians, for us as believers. Remember, as Paul writing this, he's taking a pick. Is in his mind, he's looking at the Roman soldier, and he's comparing it to the arm of God, to the arm of God. And he's bringing it in real time to us as Christians, us as believers. You know what I'm saying? which is to be the shield of our faith, y'all. The spiritual shield, the abstract shield of our faith, y'all. The shield of our faith by which we quench all the fiery darks and all the arrows and attacks from our enemies, y'all, who are no other than the wicked one, Satan and his foes. Satan and his foes, y'all, quenching and blocking, I have in my notes, all his lies. Not only his lies, all his arrows of temptation, y'all. Who? All his arrows of temptation, but also all his darts of doubt. And that's what we're going to get into. All his darts of doubt. Because we got to understand, anything done, not in faith, y'all. Is sin to God. Who is sin to God? Is sin to God. And Satan sent darts, y'all. He sent fiery darts of doubt. And it's one of the most, most, most detrimental things that could happen to a Christian, to a believer, Tedrick. That's what our faith is identified as believers. Who? <laughs> Those of the faith. So if Satan could weaken your faith, oh, God, you beat before it even starts, man. You beat before it even starts. So this shield, is fate, uh, this shield of faith is very, very important. Very, very important, y'all. It's very, very important. Because without it, we can't quench the lies. We can't quench temptation. And we will not be able to quench doubt. Ooh, that doubt, y'all, is what caused us to do things, Matthew, that we don't want to do. Who we be built up in faith. We walking right with God. It's common, and people can look. Theologians talk about it. Mostly, when you see a, a believer fall into sin, you're going to see doubt before it. You're going to see doubt before they fall into sin. Satan done shot an arrow 
and hindered their doubt, hindered their faith, yo. Causing them to operate with a lack of faith. And didn't Satan do that in the garden in the beginning? Had God said <laughs> what he was doing? He was shooting a fiery dart to bring doubt. To bring doubt. And this doubt brought sin to all humanity. Yo. This lack of faith, this lack of belief in the most high God who had been nothing but good unto them. Nothing but good unto them, y'all. And we could look at them and be hard, but the same thing happens to us. God be nothing but good to us. Coming through for us, providing for us, making a way for us. But still, we get in a place where Satan and hit us with that dart of doubt. Ooh, and it caused us to do what God would not have us do. That even happened in our marriages. That happened in our relationships. That happened in church. Ooh, that happened with best friends. Why? Because the chief, ooh, whisperer, separated chief friends. What'd he do? He sold out. He sold out. He sold out and we live this thing. This thing happens night after night, day after day, week after week on the job, y'all. A person that you rock with, that you cool with. You know what I'm saying? But somebody come in so doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So doubt. What does something you look at my so doubt? Who we, 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 we on TikTok, we on Facebook, we flashing, we doing this. Having us wanting things that we don't need. Or things that we not ready for yet. Oh, God. The devil going to always come and try to bless you with something that God got for you down the street. <laughs> but he want to give it to you fast. He want to give it to you before it's time, y'all. And we fall for it all the time. We fall for it all the time. We accept things and blessings that's not from the most high. Who <laughs> that's deep, huh? That's deep, and it happens to us. It happens to the greatest of us, y'all. It happened to preachers. It happened to teachers. It, it happens to regular Christians. It happens to even youngsters and children. So in doubt, in the classroom, in school. Friends you've been cool with. That's your home girl. That's your home boy. You and the teacher, buddy, buddy, the teacher like you, but one of the students so down. <laughs> now you're looking at the teacher the wrong way in class. This fate is deep, yo. That's why we gotta keep this shell on. And we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it and talk about it. Who help me, Lord? Help me, Lord. You know what I'm saying? This shell, yo was not only a defensive weapon I have in my notes, but it could also be used as an offensive weapon, y'all. Because the Roman soldiers would use this shield to ram straight forward into their enemies, y'all. They would ram straight forward into their enemies, but they would also jam this shield in the ground or upon the feet or the leg of the enemy. And when they would jam it in the ground, they was able to, to, to plunge forward and strike with the sword. <laughs> or the arrow, yo. This thing was also used defensively, but also offensively. It was used to, 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 ooh, to crush the enemy, Tedrick. These shields was huge. I have in my notes, these shields, yo, was... Let me not get ahead of myself. These shells, y'all, which in the Greek was referred to a large shell. Mm, so large, I have in my notes, which was two and a half feet wide. This big shell, y'all, was two and a half feet wide, but it was also two and a half feet in width wide, y'all. But it was also four and a half feet in height. In height. This shield, y'all, it would cover and protect the whole body of the Roman soldier. 
That's why we seen the pick. They had these shields. Their whole body was protected. When they would come together collectively, who God, who which God is doing in these days, bringing believers collectively, and He's gonna do it on a major scale, y'all. We only seen the first fruits of these things, and Satan is scared. Satan fighting right now. Who God, He's bringing all kind of things to distract us right now, y'all, because the truth is overwhelming in the world right now. You gotta understand that. And he's trying to distract you with so many different things. All kind of allegations. This one. Look at that. You know what I'm saying? To get your eye off of what God is really doing. He wants you to get caught up with what he's doing. <laughs> he wants you to look at everything he's doing in the earth. All the wrong he's doing. Who? God. All the, all the accusations. All the, all the bringing people down he's doing. That you miss what God doing. <laughs> you miss what God doing. He got, you, he got you bombarded with politics. He got you bombarded with things on social media. To miss what God is doing right before our eyes. It's him, y'all. It's him that's causing this. We talked about it before. It's him that's bringing all of these these diversities, all of these, who oh God, these, these, these tensions and all these different things. Y'all, it's him doing it. It's him doing it. Because he's ready for change, y'all. He's ready for change. So this big shield, y'all, this thing was huge. And it would cover the whole body. Same for us as believers, Matthew. This shield covers our whole body in the spirit. Our whole body. And is able to quench not some, but all the fiery darks of the enemy. Every single one of them is able to quench. Is able to keep us, yo. And that's why Paul tells us this. That's why he tells us in Ephesians, Paul tells us, he tells believers, take above all. What? The shield of faith. Take it above all. Above every single spiritual weapon. Who God? An arm of God that we have. That take it above all. It means that it's the most important necessary need. Oh God. I have in my notes. Let me see. He's saying that this shield of faith, y'all, is the most important thing. But going deep, back to what we want to talk about, though something is most important, it doesn't mean that it goes first in your life. <laughs> though something is more, most important to you, it doesn't mean that it could stand on its own and not be undergirded with something, not be built upon something. Because if your faith standing alone, if you sending out your faith first, oh God, even the army knew that, God knew that, even with our people in the old, what they send out first? Worshiping what? Praising and praying to the most high to deal with their enemies, man. You know what I'm saying? But this, this prayer, it has to undergird. It has to undergird. I have in my notes because this shield, y'all, of faith is undergirded by prayer. By prayer. And we see this, Tim, pull it up for me, Tim. We see this, that this thing is undergirded by prayer, y'all. And what we gonna get into, matter of fact, let me go this way. Tim, just pull it up. Let me go this way first. We wanna talk about two things, y'all. Matter of fact, first, let me get into this. Let me tell you what this faith is before we go any further. Let me tell you what this faith is. And then we could flow into it. 
this faith, y'all, in the Greek term is not talking about our faith in the sense of the word of doctrine of the church. That he talking about in, in, um, in Ephesians chapter 4, y'all, is not, is not talking about our faith in a sense of us believing the doctrines of God. The word of doctrines, who God, which we stand on and which we live by. But in this text, y'all, when you look at the commentary and um, John MacArthur and you go deep into it, it's not talking about that type of faith of Christian doctrine. You know what I'm saying? Of, of, of our belief and our knowledge of what we know in the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing. But he's talking about basic faith. Oh, God, I have in my notes, he's talking about the faith the size of a mustard seed. He's talking about simple faith. <laughs> he's talking about faith, y'all, that, 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 that was considered great mm, in the eyes of Jesus. You see, we think God calling for some big things. He's also talking about child like faith. We miss it, y'all. We miss it. He's talking about childlike faith, y'all. And I wanted to bring all the scriptures, but you know simple faith. The Bible say it was, it, it, it was the simplicity of the gospel that people stumble over. Because the gospel is so simple. It's simple faith. All you got to do is what? Believe. Believe. We always want to do something. But it's simple in nature. Not only that, they cried out. They said, Lord, increase our faith. He said, all you need is the faith of what? A mustard seed. And we bought a jar of a mustard seed, and I keep that thing in the kitchen so we could look at it, so we could remember how small a mustard seed is. But it's small, but it's pure faith. Oh, God. It's pure faith. But not only that, the scripture also talks about great faith. He said, I have not found great faith like this even in Israel. And we know that is, that is, is faith like a babe because there wasn't even Israel that believed him like that. That was the Gentiles who didn't even know him, Dr. Terry. Didn't even know him. And we're going to make the correlation to that and we're going to see it. We get caught up. Thinking our faith got to be humongous, man. We get caught up and we're going to see it. We get caught up based upon our faith in the doctrine. Who? In the, in, the, in the scriptures of our own understanding. We believe God based upon what we believe of the Bible, y'all, of the doctrine that we've been taught. Church doctrine, and that's good in a way, but that's not perfect faith, yo. Because you know why? We only know in part. We don't know it all. We only know in part. We none got it right, specifically, perfectly. That's why I always say we're trying our best to cut it as straight as possible. But he said we only know in part. We none got it just, just automatically. We just know it. And that understanding when, we, when we, we try to believe and have faith in God based upon our knowledge of the scripture, it's a limited faith. <laughs> it's a limited faith. And God had to deal with me behind that because especially them that's Bereans and study the Bible. And you see that a lot. You know what you call those type of people? And we never want to be that. I never want to be that, and I don't want you to be that. They are called unbelieving believers. <laughs> they are called unbelieving believers because we're about to look at this scripture in Mark 9, 24, y'all. And we're going to look at the other one, how prayer undergirds faith, y'all. You know what I'm saying? You need to understand this thing. This thing blessed me this week. Who? Because I'm believing God for some things, y'all. 
I don't know about you, but I'm believing God to move. Oh, God, I'm believing God to, to do things that my eye have not seen. Yo. I'm believing God to change things, not only in my life, but in all those that surround me. Who oh, I'm, I'm praying and believing God to do a work in this church that you've never seen before. Who oh, I'm praying to see God do a work in men that you've never seen before. Who oh, I'm praying, y'all. And it's going to take faith. <laughs> Not no faith based upon my knowledge and, and, and understanding of the scriptures. That's limited. That's limited. That's limited. And we're going to see this. I, I have in my notes that we're going to look at in, 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 um, in Luke. We're going to get in touch. Y'all bear with me. I got to bring, bring this thing to you the way he gave it to me. In Luke, we're going to see that faith, it keeps us. But prayer keeps faith. We're going to see in Mark 9 and 24, y'all, that, 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 that faith is very, very important and is the most important thing because without, with, 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 without faith or lack of faith, our prayers are powerless, are powerless. But at the same exact, exact, exact time, with no confusion, our prayers, we are able to pray and help and strengthen our lack of faith. <laughs> That's what's so deep about prayer and how it undergirds, y'all. Because though you find yourself with a lack of faith, we gonna see, oh God. And we, it's important because your prayers gonna be powerless. It ain't gonna move nothing with a lack of faith or no faith. But that very same prayer, you could pray for strength, ooh, for help in your lack of faith, in your unbelief. Ooh, God. And a lot of times we lack in faith and it causes us not to want to pray. Because any man, any woman with a lack of faith in her heart, she, can, she can't pray to God. He can't pray to God, and we're going to look at it in, in Ian Bounds. We're going to see it. That's the most important thing we need in this day that we're living in. Men and women of faith. You know what I'm saying? We allow when a lack of faith stop us, stopping us from praying when we can pray to strengthen, to help. Oh, God, to build and increase our faith. Our faith in the book of um, Thessalonians, it talked about Paul looked at the church and he said how their faith increase. It 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 increased. It 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 kept growing. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes we we caught up with this lack of faith, and we don't understand that our out. We think only our out is the, is, is the word. The word, you come and hear the word. The word, we, we know that. Faith coming by hearing and hearing of the word. And that's true. But what if Satan causing you not to hear? What if you come and hear the word, but you dead? It's not that the word dead, but you dead. Oh, God. It's not that the word not working and moving, but you can't receive it. Oh, God. And you come and sit every day and there's no change. Why? Who? You're still with the same lack of faith that you had before. Have you ever prayed, God, help me? Who? I believe, God, but help my. Come on, man. Come on, man. And it's but a prayer away. It's but a prayer when, when you call that Miss Terry, he going to strengthen your faith and he going to move for you in your situation. Your lack of faith was stopping him, but you could turn it around and say, God, I believe, but help my unbelief, man. Prayer 
not going to undergird that faith that you need. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him, the Bible say in Hebrews 11, 6, y'all. It's impossible to please him. We must come to him, he say, we must come to him knowing who he is. And that he a reward of those that diligently seek him, y'all. That's childlike faith. That's not you believing what you know about God. It's believing who God is. Who Jesus is. And we're going to see that confusion in the disciples. Jesus had to rebuke him and say, oh, there's this, this faithless generation. They say, why we couldn't cast out this demon? Why? He said, because of a lack of faith. And when you read John MacArthur, they wouldn't in confidence. When you read J um, um, Benson and you go and look at the commentary, all of them going to agree that the disciples wouldn't have, they wouldn't, wouldn't in a lack of confidence. Nah, they went to the situation with confidence. You know what I'm saying, Patrick? They was ready to cast out the demon. Patrick, they went with confidence. But the demon didn't budge. And we know Jesus gave them some other, you know what I'm saying, underwriting that could have been the problem. He said, some don't go out but by prayer and fasting. Oh, God, he even brought prayer back into the situation. But it doesn't deny that he told them it was because of your lack of faith. You know what I'm saying? It was because of your lack of faith. You see, y'all got me flowing, man. God, I can't even settle and get to the scriptures, man. Let's look at it, man. Pull up Mark. Pull up Mark, sound boot. Mark 9, 4, 4, um, 24, since we there. You know what I'm saying? Since we there. And then I'm going to read this caption from, uh, from Ian Bounds, y'all. Who this book, The Complete Works of Ian Bounds on Prayer? Who you got to get into these prayer books, man? These things going to change your life, man. You know what I'm saying? It's going to keep you on fire for prayer. And we're going to talk about what he says that we, that's needed right now. We think a lot of things needed, Miss Terry, that's not really needed. The church don't know what's lacking right now. With all that's going on. People in their marriage don't know what's lacking, what's all that's going on. Situations with their children, they don't know what's lacking. They don't know what's going on with all that's going on. They turn into all kind of other sources. <laughs> and we're going to let him bound shores then. You know what I'm saying? But just to deal with this, this Mark 9, 24, y'all, and I'm going to just flow with it. And um, I'm going to paraphrase it, but you could go back and study it and read it for yourself. We already know that this is talking about the demon-possessed son. And this account is in all the synoptic gospels. It's in Matthew, it's in Mark, and it's in Luke. And we're looking at it from the perspective of Mark. Because they all show different pictures of it, Mr. Franklin. They see it from a different view. And, and, and some of the synoptic gospels, he don't even deal with the father. You don't even see that. He only deal with the disciples. <laughs> but as in Mark, we see that he, he decided to challenge this man's faith. You see, it'll give you the scriptures in different viewpoints to give you a different outlook of it. So you can see it not one way, but more than one way. So you can see it not the way man see it, but the way the father see it. Oh, God. So you could know not just the principles of it, but the intentions of it. Oh, we not only want to know the scriptures, but we want to know the intentions behind it. God, what is you saying by the spirit, by the Ruach? What you saying, Lord? So we know that this. This demon possessed man, and we talked about how he dealt with the disciples already, but we see how he deals with the father. And in verse 23, Jesus tell him, he say, only believe. 
He said anything is possible for, for them who believe. He challenged the man's faith. He said, he said, you just got to believe. And the man looked at him in 24. Immediately, the father of the child cried out, y'all. He didn't stay in this mess of unbelief and not going to the father. He didn't stay bound and not having his situation change. He didn't stay in that place. What he did, he humbled himself. And he said, the Bible said, the father of the child cried out and said, with tears in his eyes, y'all. He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. This man used prayer to undergird, to strengthen his lack of faith that he needed in prayer to move God. You see, prayer invites God into the situation. But faith moves him. <laughs> faith move him. Faith move him, y'all. Sound Boo, pull up that quote from me from uh, from Ian Baum. Let me get that quote if you can. Let's look at that from Ian Baum. It's kind of low. But I'm gonna go ahead on and read it, y'all. Ian Baum. That's his quote in his book. Y'all, look what he said concerning this time. And I believe this is rhema for the church. This is rhema for the church, y'all. This is rhema for Dallas. Who? This is rhema for you in your personal life. This is rhema for you in your family. This is rhema for you in your situation with your job. This is rhema for you in your business. This is rhema for you. And what you're waiting for. This is rhema in your healing. Oh, God. Look what Ian Bounds said, a man of prayer, y'all. He says, not the intellectual, the intellect, the, the inter, uh, in, intellect. <laughs> Hold up, y'all. <laughs> that devil trying to steal this word. Oh, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the help, y'all. Is not the intellectual great that the church need, nor is it men of wealth that the times demand. Nor is it men of wealth that the time demands, y'all. It's not the people of great social influence that this day requires. But he said above everybody, in everything else, it is men of faith. Who God that's gonna produce what Ian Bound? Men of mighty prayer. Men of powerful prayer, y'all. Yo. You know what I'm saying? And, and I believe all those things are there. All those things are there. He waiting to just pour it. Oh God. That's not the lack that we, we, we lack in in church. It's not intellect, y'all. It's not wealth, y'all. It's not social influence, y'all. We want to be an influencer that the day requires, but it's men and women of faith that's going to bring forth prayers with power with power, with power. Men and women after the fashion of the saints of the hero, heroes numerated in the book of Hebrews who obtained a good report through faith, y'all, that the church in the whole wide world of humanity needs, needs. That's what we need, y'all. That's what we need, men of faith, y'all. Men of faith. And that faith going to have to be undergirded. It's going to have to be laid upon the foundation of prayer, saints. Because you will get weak in faith, man. 
You will get weak in faith. Let's continue. In Luke 22, let me, let me confirm this even more for you. You know the famous, the famous um, scripture in Luke 22, 31 through 32. The Bible said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan have asked for you that he may swift you as wheat. But look what Jesus said. Jesus said, but I have prayed for you. Prayed for you what? In what fashion, Lord? That your faith should not fail. That your faith shouldn't fail. Jesus was worrying about the fate of Peter. <laughs> More than removing faith, Peter from the swifting. More than hiding Peter from the swifting. He was more so worried about what, y'all? The faith of Peter, which is the most important thing for us as, as believers, as Christians. Your faith is more important than every single one of these spiritual um, weapons in, in, in armor of God, even prayer. You know what I'm saying? But we just showed y'all prayer undergird, and anything that undergird must be laid first. Let me show it to you in this scripture, and we just read it. Because in this scripture, we see, y'all, that it was the faith that kept Peter. He said, he said, I prayed for your faith. He said, he said that afterwards, after Satan swift you, he said, he said, and you will return to me and strengthen, strengthen your brethren. After Satan tried to swift you, he said, I pray for your feet. Your feet going to be strengthened. Oh, God. And you're going to return and strengthen your brethren. You're going to return and strengthen your sisters. You're going to return and strengthen those that surround you, the church. Satan acts to swift you, to, to sift you, y'all. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith fell not. And what I see in this is that faith kept Peter. But it was the prayer of Jesus that kept faith. <laughs> you see, the faith kept Peter and strengthened Peter to come back and strengthen his brothers. But it was the prayer of Jesus that kept the faith of Jesus, the, the faith of Peter. It was prayer that kept faith, y'all. So we see that it undergirded the faith of Peter, man. It undergirded it. It undergirded it. And that's what we got to know and understand. That is prayer, y'all, that undergirds our faith. You know what I'm saying? It undergirds our faith. Let's move. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to flow through these. Where I'm at? What I got, love? I think I could get through? 15 minutes. That's going to work fine. Ooh, that's going to bring us where we need to be because I'm not going to go deep. Lord, please, who God, I hope you got that about, about faith in this, this, this correlation. You know what I'm saying? But let's continue, y'all. Prayer also undergirds the helmet of salvation, y'all. The helmet of salvation. And when you study and look at it, it's talking about the salvation, y'all, that we receive in Christ. It's not really talking about salvation going out and, 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 and give the gospel and, and bring salvation to others. But when you look at it, it's talking about, y'all, the helmet of salvation. You know what I'm saying? That's upon the soldier, the Roman soldier. And we showed you the pictures already. You've seen the helmet of salvation, y'all. And this helmet protects a vital place. It protects the head. It protects the brain, yo. We know anything that get hit in the brain. Who God. You know what I'm saying? Is what? Brain dead, man. If they hit you right, it's brain dead. Brain, brain, um, brain, damn, brain damage, yo. Oh, God, and I forgot to, uh, uh, man, let me continue to move. <laughs> God. I forgot an illustration, y'all, that God had gave me, but we're going to continue. You know what I'm saying? 
is talking about this helmet of salvation, y'all. And God was breaking this down. And when you study it, a lot of believers, y'all, we leave out the house with our helmet of salvation. Because we doubt our salvation. We don't believe that we really saved. And I done met so many be believers who struggle between I think I'm saved, I'm not saved, I, I believe I'm saved, I, I did this and I did that. And we struggle because we don't take him at his word. Yo. And we leave out Mr. Franklin with this helmet of salvation not being on our head. And we going into battle day by day. You know what I'm saying? The scriptures teaches us, man. And John wrote this. You know what I'm saying? He wants you to know that you can be of sure of your salvation. I know the scriptures say work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. But you got to understand that the Holy Spirit bear witness with your spirit that you are children of God. He gives you certain things to satisfy, to, to establish, to, to bring a sound to, your, to, to your, your belief in him saving you. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand that you got to take him at his word. You got to stop fighting him. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, what, what John said in 1 John 5, 13. He said, these things are right to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. You already believed. He said that you may know that you have eternal life. Not that you, you might have eternal life, but that you may know. You may know you have it. You know what I'm saying? And that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Stop letting Satan play with your salvation, man. Because you're leaving out of the house without your helmet. You know what I'm saying? So stop letting him play with that, saints. And we're going to continue to move. Prayer also undergirds the sword of the Spirit. And we know this, y'all. We know this, that he, it undergirds the word of God. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't pull up the scripture, but we know the scripture in Psalms when he prayed to God. And he said, God, let me see wondrous, glorious things. Where? In your word. You see, you can't get deep revelation from God without, without prayer, y'all. You can't get an understanding of this Bible like you're supposed to without prayer. I told you before, prayer represents a relationship between you and God. And the word of God is the, is who? The word of God is his actual words. You got the Logos and you got the Rhema, y'all. The Logos is the written word. The Rhema is, is when God speaks to your spirit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And I was just talking to a prophet about the Logos and the Rhema, y'all. But when I started reading the Bible, one of the first things that blessed me when I was reading it, I wasn't reading it to just understand it or get revelation. I was reading it to hear God. I wanted to hear him like David hear him. I wanted to hear him like, 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 like Abraham heard him. I wanted to hear him like the saints of old heard him, y'all. And I told that to my wife. I remember that just getting saved, sitting out in the parking lot, still doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing. You know what I'm saying? Early in the faith, a beginning in the faith. But, but, but I, I was reading his word. I wanted to hear him. And that blessed my life. Because when I would open it and read it, I would read it in a sense of God, what you telling me? What you speaking to me right now in my life? Have you ever did that? Open up the scriptures and say, God, what you saying to me? Direct me to a passage in your word. Oh, God, and speak to me. Give me a rhema word, a right now word. You know what I'm going through. And you trust him and you, you open it and you begin to read. And things you read, Nick, it begin to stick to your heart. Ooh. And you know within your heart that God is saying this and that and this and that. 
You know what I'm saying? So read the word, but let it be undergirded with prayer. And I promise he going to speak to you. I promise he going to speak to you. But let's keep going, man. And we're going to jump into our five minutes. Oh, God. We're going to stay right at God. Because what we're going to get into, we're going to get into this sub point B, y'all. So I'm glad I got out of that. You know what? Now I got time to give you this analogy. Call him up, pa Paulie. This analogy on faith. But what we're going to get into this sub point B, y'all, is that prayer should be placed first in our life because prayer brings forth power. It brings forth power. Miss Terry, what we doing it here? It looked like his nut. We all coming together, a few of us, and bombarding heaven. It looked like his nut. But I grant you, you're leaving with power. Oh, and we're going to see how, how the, the disciples had to correlate this thing. This prayer of Jesus. We're going to see that Jesus placed it first in his life, y'all. Before he did anything else, he placed it first. Prayer was the first thing he went to. And every time they would see him pray. And after they would see him pray, they would see power. They would see prayer, then they would see power. They would see prayer, then they would see power. Yo. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to end it with that, man. I, I think I done, I done went. Whew. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, Father, we just thank you for what you're doing, God. So, Daddy, be with us. Be with us as we get into this word, God. Let it be imprinted upon our hearts, Daddy. For your glory and for your name's sake, God. For you know, God, how much Satan fight these words of prayer, God. But bust through, Daddy. For your word is a hammer, you say, Daddy. Whoo, have your way. So, Saint, you could just bow your heads and we're going to pray, man. We're going to pray under the sound, sound of the instrumental. We're going to pray that God impress, print, imprint this thing on us. We're going to pray for, for, for power. We're going to pray, y'all, that, that our faith, y'all, our faith always be undergirded with prayer and let it be strengthened. So, Father, we come before you, Lord, and we thank you for your word. Lord, I come before you just standing, God, in the gap for your people. You know my heart for them, God. And Father, I thank you that you could use this word to even sharpen me, even prick me, God. So, Father, I'm asking you, God, to break, God, every stronghold over your people, God, that would hinder them from praying to you, God. Father, I'm asking you, God, to, to, to loose your anointing, God, and break the yokes, God. Let them get home and run to their closet to pray, God. Let them get home and run to their knees, God. Let them, for the Lord, be, 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 be eager to pray, God. Let it be as a burden upon them that they commune with you, that they talk to you, that they fellowship with you. That they just bathe in your presence, God. For we know in your presence there's freedom, there's liberty. And daddy, we know that you need men of faith, women of faith, who are going to bring forth mighty prayers, God. That's our aim, most high. So hear us as we call upon you. Hear us as we beckon unto you, Daddy. And bless your people like never before. Open the heavens, God, and cause a rain for them. For we stand before you as mere men and women like Elijah, God, who prayed unto you, God, and it didn't rain for three years. 
but who pray it to you again in the skies open, Lord. Give us, God, fervent and passionate fire prayer, God, that it might make it into your sanctuary. And Lord, answer us. Move speedily for us. Let us not leave the prayer room, God, without our prayers being answered. Let it be answered soon as we leave, God. Let us get the answer for it. Speak unto us like you did to Solomon, God. When you spoke, God, after he prayed, you said, Who, God? that thy word have been heard. And we know what the scriptures say that if we pray to you and we hear you, we know that we have the petitions that we ask, Lord. So let it be according to your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, we also ask you for simple faith, God, because we know that everybody not saved, God. Everybody have not taken you at your word, Father. So, Lord, we ask that you penetrate with this gospel, God. For we know, God, that you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross for all of our sins, God. And you said that if we believe you with simple faith, God, that all that call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So, Father, we ask you to save us. Repeat after me, saints, say, Father. I thank you for your word. I thank you for prayer. And I thank you that you are able to strengthen my faith. So, Lord, I ask you with perfect faith to save my soul. I believe in your dead. I believe in your burial. And I believe in your resurrection. Now fill me up with your spirit. And make me new. And change my life forever. I thank you for it. I receive it. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. All it just told me y'all that. We'll praise you. They got a hurricane coming on. We'll Is that hip hop? It might Atlanta. Oh, God. Father, we come before you, God. It's not by accident, God. And you know, Father Lord, that you have one of God, Philadelphia, in Atlanta, God. A church that's thriving, God. A church that's doing your will, God. Being led under Israel, God. Being led under our pastor, our bishop, Father. So we asking you, God, to cover them. Every single person, God, that's in Atlanta. Let the storm miss them, Father. Just like it missed Lafayette, God. Do the same thing for Atlanta. Move, O oh King. As we stand in agreement, God. Trust in you, Father Lord. Our faith is in you, God. In who you is. In all your benefits. So we asking you, God, to cover Atlanta. Ooh. And every single saint believer, God. And we thank you for it. Even now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Oh God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord bless you with shalom peace. May he be with you as you depart from him. That he be with you and give you travel and grace. Love you, Philly of Dallas. Be blessed in Jesus name. In Jesus name.